When I was about 10, my friend introduced me to the Final Fantasy video game series. It all started with me, with number 10. Now, I'm going to skip over why I enjoyed every aspect of this game. It was so amazing. And why I feel the Final Fantasies are the best gaming experiences I've ever had. No, today I want to get into a particular piece of the story. Spoilers, guys. By the way, just so you know, I'm probably going to pronounce it Titus by accident, because when I played the game, they never said his name out loud, so I assumed it was Titus, and then later everyone was telling me it was Titus. So I'm probably going to do both by accident. So if I say Titus or Titus, you know I mean the same person, I'm just too attached to my childhood to change it. If you haven't played the game yet, please do not give a shit about finding out what's really up with the main character, Titus. Real quick, Titus is a professional athlete in a city called Xanarkin. One day a giant monster called Sin attacks the city right in the middle of one of his games. Titus is absorbed by the monster and somehow ends up on the same planet he was on, but at a different time. He meets up with some neat people who are on a pilgrimage to stop the very same monster that absorbed him in the first place. Titus finds out that he's actually from the past. But as the story progresses, you find out that Titus isn't exactly real. Well, not real like the other characters are. Such as Yuna and Aaron, who is real but dead. They call those types unsense in the lore of the world. The revelation is pretty much that Titus is part of this imagined fantasy world, a dream, and he cannot remain in reality. Which is a drag because he's totally getting it on with Yuna, the token love interest of the story. So to save the day, Titus and the others have to defeat Sin, and the only way they could do that is by sending Titus back to whatever dreamland he's from, wherever people who don't exist go. And you know what? That ending is so evocative and sad. One of those tragic, bittersweet things. None of the people in the game, or any of the audience members playing the game, want Titus to go. He did the hero thing, and deserves to get the girl, and accolades for beating the monster Sin. But instead, he's got to leave. So yeah, the end is him fading from reality, and everybody being super sad. I remember it. Yes, and that's it. The end. Here's another way why that ending is so valuable. It's applicable to real life. You know, if you take some liberties. Negating the realness of Titus and, and where he goes, we as people are stricken with the condition of meeting other incredible people. People we need in our lives to make us feel happy, make us better. These friendships, these relationships, these family members, eventually they all go away. One by one. It's the reality of life. It's not just death, either. People move, lose touch, get into irreconcilable fights, and never hear from each other again. Now, that's not as dramatic as Titus' fate, but it's still analogous. Parting with our hero Titus in the video game, it's something we all have to do with real people in our lives, and way too often, it seems. And it makes you wonder about the nature of Titus' character, because everybody in the world of Final Fantasy are obviously fictional characters. But Titus was a fictional character in a fictional world, so he's like two degrees of fiction here. Ah, but here's where the story doesn't end. Final Fantasy X was a really popular game. It sold really, really well. So much that the makers of the game, Square Enix, decided that the stories in Spira were worthy of continuation. For the first time in the history of Final Fantasy games, there was a direct sequel. And it was called Final Fantasy X 2. Now this game got a lot of hate. It was divergent from the tone found in Final Fantasy X. The story continues, but there's just a lot of fun, a, a little peril, uh, not as many stakes, not as many complexities. You could tell it was sort of tied together really fast. But there is one thing about the game that kind of tugs you along all the way through. It's the notion and some hints that the main character Yuna gets that Titus might still be out there somewhere, and that he might return to her if she seeks him out. And what do you know, by the end of Final Fantasy X-2, that's exactly what we get. It isn't even explained very well. Just like, hey, look at me, remember me? I'm back. I exist now. Happy ending. I was gone forever, but yay, now I'm back. Needless to say, this outcome seems to diminish the value of the entire story of the first Final Fantasy X game. Add to the fact that Final Fantasy X-2 is pretty much inferior to every aspect of its predecessor. And you can imagine why it got so much hate. This is sort of what happens when a story gets popular enough, though. They have a tendency to expand their parameters and franchises. Sequels, reboots... Think of how there's a new Dragon Ball series after, what, 10, 15 years since it ended? Ended. Right. So my main question is, where did Titus go? If you want to treat Final Fantasy X-2 as something like a fan fiction, something that should be aborted from all memory, 
Keep in mind that the people who made the story deliberately intended that ending for Ten Two, and they did so in opposition of their decision to make Tidus go away at the end of the last game. Final Fantasy X's ending was powerful, whereas Final Fantasy X's two ending is, it, I guess you could say it's powerful, but but powerfully paltry, sappy. I believe they call it fan service or setting up another sequel. So yeah, Titus pretty much went to what they call the Grey Havens in fiction. That's where Frodo and Gandalf went at the end of Lord of the Rings. So what about the people who want more? Well, there should be no more. The ending of the story was definite. How it ended was how it was intended to end, and now it's over. For years, George Lucas insisted that there was nothing after Star Wars Episode VI. The Star Wars story ended with the redemption of Darth Vader. Well, I just think of it like a weakness, or perhaps greediness. And just what responsibility do creators have to their story worlds? Do they have more responsibility to keep the integrity of the ending and the characters? Or do they have more responsibility to keep the fans happy? Well, to be honest, they can do whatever the fuck they want with their characters, and we don't have to like it. Your story might ultimately suffer as a result. Another angle is, not everyone is going to be happy with what you do. So where did Titus go? He was gone, now apparently he's back. It's sort of a denial of what happens in real life. And so fiction doesn't have to adhere to what happens in real life. But I think the best stories know how important it is to keep real life in mind. Direct quote from Final Fantasy X, every story must have an ending. People come and go and return in our lives. Thing is, a lot of them don't. This is Ryan Starblow, and you better have a good day.